Look out! Oh my goodness! Ready for three! Oh my baby! Oh, oh baby! Oh, 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 oh. We tip things off by taking you into the action in the Western Conference, starting in the Midwest Division with a Utah Jazz. The defending conference champions are tied for the NBA's best record as they start to look ahead to the playoffs. And against the Warriors, Carl Malone led the attack. Malone, drives, hang, score! Stop to the assist, Malone with the record. Right corner to Shannon, low to Carl Malone, he goes in, and it's good! The ball there! Malone had a season-high 38 points in Utah's win over Golden State. The next night, Utah hosted Danny Ainge's Phoenix Suns. And the game was close from start to finish, as the lead changed hands 29 times. In the fourth quarter, the Jazz look to take control behind the mailman. Watershuck right drive to the right corner to Isley. He's alone. Goes underneath the Carl Malone gate. Class, great finish. Got it. He's fouled. Carl Malone, the fastest gun in the West. Still, the Jazz trailed by one until Brian Russell stepped up. Out front to Russell. Russ making one bounce, leaping lane, 16 footer. Good. Right down the barrel. Brian Russell, right inside the 20 foot mark, gets it. But the Suns came back with a huge shot of their own. Over the right corner, Morris for three, he got it, Chris Morris, a former Jazz man, and the Phoenix Suns go crazy. With you down by two, Malone was fouled on a three-point attempt at the buzzer, and he'd have a chance to win it at the foul line. Pressure, pressure, free throw, good, the three in a row. I realize that if I have good games our chances on winning go up i realize that but i'm starting to like what i'm seeing from my team next the houston rockets look for something to smile about after seven straight losses to utah but the jazz were too much russell with a jam from isley russell scored 19 while greg ostertag added 11 points and 15 rebounds as the jazz beat houston again now let's go back into the action, this time in the Pacific Division, where the Sacramento Kings are making a run at the playoffs. Chris Webber and the Kings got their week off to a good start against the Nuggets. Webber, on a fake, gives it up, Divac to dunk. Lottie Divac scored 21 points, and so did Webber, with the help of point guard Jason Williams. And it comes out to Williams, he's three on one, Williams foot race for the trailing Webber, look up, oh, he turns it home! Sacramento won it by six. Next, Williams took his show on the road to Vancouver and displayed more great passing. Clock clock in five seconds, ball in the hand of Williams. What a pass to Vladdy Divac. Ah, but Jason wasn't through yet as the Kings won it by three. Oh, what a pass by Williams. Man. I feel like uh, every game we play from here on out is going to have to be like a playoff game if we expect to make it. Next up, Carl Malone and the Utah Jazz, who took an early nine-point lead. But Williams and the Kings came storming back. Look at that pass from Jason Williams to Carlos Williams. Yeah, Jason was showcasing all his moves as the rookie helped Sacramento pull ahead by 13 points. And look at the play. Oh, the crowd wanted he wants to get it, but whoever found But just when the Kings were ready to celebrate, the Jazz rallied to force an overtime. And loses the dribble, Shannon Anderson, three on one. Russell. And in the overtime, Carl Malone took over. The mailman finished with 30 points as Utah won it by five. Now let's take a look at the playoff picture in the Western Conference. The Utah Jazz and the Portland Trailblazers are tied for the number one seed and also tied for the NBA's best record. The San Antonio Spurs are in the third spot. The Houston Rockets are fourth followed by the Los Angeles Lakers and the Minnesota Timberwolves. The Seattle Sonics are in seventh place, while the Phoenix Suns are holding on to the eighth and final playoff spot. The Sacramento Kings are one game back, followed by the Golden State Warriors. If I was a window washer, an architect, a security guard, 
or a farmer? Instead of a famous basketball player, would you care what I drink? Would Sprite not taste the same? Would I be doing this commercial? What do you think? Today, Philip Island roars with the World Superbike Championship. Can the Aussies win at home? Plus, Mick Doohan kicks off his sixth world title challenge in Malaysia. Round one of the World Motorcycle Grand Prix. All on your home of motorsport, Network 10. Let's see. Whoa. Right hand. Mm, nah, let's switch it to the left. Mm, two hands. Nah. Don't go. Uh, let's save it. Oh, here we go. When your car starts singing, when you turn the key, with the cylinders in perfect harmony. something to sell? Why hang around all day waiting for the phone to ring when cash converters will pay you instant cash for any items of value you no longer want or need. Instant cash for your unwanted goods. Another reason why cash converters is a better way to sell and a great place to shop. Welcome back to NBA Action. Now we go back into the action. Starting in the Atlantic Division with a red-hot Miami Heat. Alonzo Morning and the Heat were in Toronto looking to cool off rookie Vince Carter and the Raptors, who'd won six straight and so wasted no time getting started. Oh, he wheeled in and scored the layup. So on the offensive board. So oh, slapping it through. Oh, boy. Morning burned the Raptors on both ends with 20 points and seven block shots. Miami's defense and teamwork helped them roll to a 22-point win. Open for a corner three. Aha! Uh -huh. What team basketball the Heat have struck together tonight. And defense was the focus once again the next night, as the Heat got set to face Don Nelson's Dallas Mavericks. This is going to be an energy game, an effort game, and, uh, and we can't allow whatever they do to take us out of that. But Sean Bradley had other ideas, helping Dallas take an early nine-point lead. Riley was looking for a spark, and he got it from forward B.J. Brown. Brown finished with 23 points as he led the Heat past the Mavericks for their third straight victory. P.J. He has become the prince of mid-range. Next, the Heat traveled to Chicago and held the Bulls to 49 points, the lowest total since the inception of the 24-second shot clock. Tim Hardaway scored 22 points in Miami's win, while Morning continued his strong play with 19 points. The Heat came home the next night to host Ray Allen and the Bucks. Miami went up by 10 late in the game behind Jamal Mashburn, who scored 25 points. Mash up court on the spin and finish. But Riley and the Heat knew Milwaukee would fight back. They're a very um, competitive ball club. And um, they got some they got some guys that can really uh, stick it from the outside. And thanks to the sharp shooting of Allen, the Bucks came back from a 15-point deficit. And they had a chance to tie the game in the final second. Allen with two seconds left. Missed it, the Heat win it. Miami wins. Now we go back into the action and take a look at a central division battle between the Indiana Pacers and the Detroit Pistons. Brad Hill led the Pistons into Indiana for a key matchup against Reggie Miller and the division-leading Pacers. Early on, it was all Indiana as they took command. Miller for two. <laughs> Over the shoulder, Smith carries it. And there's a steal by Miller. Ahead of the field is Davis. He's going, going, gone. Elvin Gentry's Pistons were down by as many as 12 points. 
But with outside shooting from veteran Joe Dumars and Lindsey Hunter, Detroit came back. And in the fourth quarter, they tied the game thanks to Judd Bushler. Bushler can hit the three and does. But Larry Bird's team went back on top, led by Rick Smith, who scored 35 points. It's oh, it in. Big fella. Detroit wouldn't quit, and with time running down, they brought the game to within one. Bushler for three. It's there with six seconds to go. After Smith hit a free throw, the Pistons trailed by two. But they would have the ball and a chance to win in the final second. Left side, Lindsey. Lindsey, three on the way. Yes! He makes it! He makes it in! Oh, my goodness! Wow! It's a big game for us, you know. Uh, every play down the stretch was big for us. Uh, they showed their you know, true character as a championship team. And, uh, you know, I think we're growing and trying to get where they are. Now, let's take a look at the Eastern Conference playoff race. The Orlando Magic are in the top spot by two games over the Miami Heat. The Indiana Pacers are third, but would be the number two seed in the playoffs if they win the Central Division. The Detroit Pistons are fourth, followed by the Milwaukee Bucks and Atlanta Hawks. The New York Knicks are in seventh place, while the Philadelphia 76ers and Cleveland Cavaliers are tied for the eighth and final playoff spot. Time now for our Hot Shots, where we highlight one of the best performances of the week. The L.A. Lakers' Shaquille O'Neal is considered the game's most dominant force. And Shaq showed why in a Pacific Division battle against the Seattle Sonics. Shaq baseline on Pauly's. Count it, plus the foul. Kobe behind the back on Shrimp. Finds O'Neal inside to tie it. On a day when Glenn Rice was sidelined, it was Shaq who carried the scoring load for the Lakers. And his teammates looked to O'Neal to keep L.A. in the game. Looking for Shaq, who finishes it. Shaq backs in, gets his own rebound, and won't miss that one. Scoring at will on the inside, Shaquille O'Neal would end up with 38 points, a season high. Fisher into the lane, lays it off to Shaq. Coach Paul Westfall and his Sonics just couldn't find a way to contain Shaq. The Lakers' big man was using every move in his arsenal as he overpowered Seattle. Shaq again, triple team, shoots anyway, scores anyway, and comes to the line. Oh, that's his pass to Shaq And look out below. Though the Lakers lost the game by four, O'Neal made 18 of 30 shots from the field and also pulled down eight rebounds. Now here's the league scoring leaders. Philadelphia's Allen Iverson's on top with Shaquille O'Neal in second. He's followed by Sharif Abdurrahim, Carl Malone, Gary Payton, and Tim Duncan. Welcome back to NBA Action. Now it's time to enter another basketball dimension as we check out some of the week's best plays in the Highlight Zone. Going around in circles trying to find the Highlight Zone? Well, stop hanging around. Open your eyes and take a close look at these incredible alley-oops from around the league. Uh, for Penny, by the way, for the dunk. Nets are off and running. Marbury, the lob. Fairmore, the catch, the alley-oop. Three up to 50, they got three on two. Alley-oop, yes! To Lopez! Oh, that was a nice pass. Still can't find what you're looking for? Well, try taking a peek at these thrilling buzzer beaters. Marbury, one-on-one -on -one with Iverson. Marbury, the jump shot. Got it! Well, you knew he was going to take it. Out on top, Phillips, a huge three that's good from near the center line. I mean, he was barely on the Grizzly logo. Unbelievable shot. Excuse me, hurry up and find your seats there because you definitely don't want to miss some of the highlight zones, uh, well, you know, lighter moments. Okay, Shannon took him right off the picture. Yes, yeah, sometimes players just can't seem to get a handle on things. Miscommunication there. Cornell David made a cut. Victor Simpkins didn't realize it. David, however, gets it back. Can they corral it? No, they can't. My goodness. All right.
right now it's time to really get down with some incredible passes from the NBA's top playmakers. Jackson, beautiful feed, Davis counter to the foul. Pretty feet inside to Kittle. And a foul. Gorgeous pass from Stephon Marbury. Now we don't want to put you to bed just yet because it's still early enough to catch some of the best defensive plays of the week. Armstrong strips it from Workman. He throws one down. Here comes Marcy Bones on the push. Starts to the hoop. Blocked by Finley. Hey, where are you going with that ball? Uh, I guess that means it's the end of the zone. So until next week, drive safely and keep your eyes on the road. Time now to break down the basketball basics and take an inside look at one of the NBA's greatest coaches ever in Choctaw. Pat Riley's proud to be third in NBA career coaching victories after passing Dick Mata and the legendary Red Auerbach. It's quite an achievement just from the standpoint that you know, these are great, great, great coaches that have put a lot of time and effort into it. And, um, you know, I've been blessed with a lot of players, and, and for some reason I've caught, I've caught a lot of these great men. So it's an honor to be up in that class. Riley's leadership and intensity have helped transform the Miami Heat into one of the league's elite teams. Pat's head coaching career began in 1981 with the Los Angeles Lakers, and he guided them to four NBA championships in the 1980s. For 10 years, uh, there wasn't a better team in the history of the NBA for sustaining excellence. There was nine trips to the finals, there was five world championships. See, when it comes down to focus, and when it comes down to intensity, and it comes down to courage and will, that team simply showed the heart of a champion. After winning the 1987 title, Riley motivated his team with a bold prediction. We're sitting there at the parade. So Riley jumps up, it was his turn to speak, and he said, you know what? I'm guaranteeing everybody here, next year we're going to win it again. And the Lakers made good on the promise, winning back-to-back -back championships. But in 1991, Riley moved on. He embarked on a new challenge as he brought his winning ways to the New York Knicks. Under the guidance of Riley, the Knicks became championship contenders. They reached the 1994 NBA Finals against the Houston Rockets, where New York jumped out to a three games to two lead. What a play by Harper! The Knicks would lose in seven games. And in 1995, Riley joined the Miami Heat. This year, he has them poised for a run at the championship. All the heat is cooking. They're really cooking, Eric. They're as good as anybody. Um, you know, we see ourselves right there in the finals. I am a champion. The fiery shooting guard and new leader of the Golden State Warriors is holding court. During his eight seasons with the Knicks, John Starks made a name for himself. He symbolized the spirit of the city of New York, and he was regarded as the heart of the team. He was also a tireless worker with his intensity and tough defense. Starks puts it away! Another brilliant play by John Starks. On the offensive end, he was a fierce competitor with an aggressive style. What a move by Starks! And yeah, he could really shoot the three. Starks will have to fire it. He does! Got him off the top! But now, John Starks is adding a new chapter to his career. Being in New York was a, a great time in my life. And, uh, you know, I never gonna forget all the winning moments that we had there, all the fans there that supported me. And now I just have to look at the future. John's future is in Golden State, helping to lead P.J. Carlissimo's Warriors. John's personality is such, and his work ethic is such, that he's never gonna be just another player. He's always going to be one of the guys that sets the tone. I have to go out there and play the way I'm capable of playing. That's playing hard. He can beat him. Shot clock at five. Starks, the runner, up and in! Players see that, and uh, they pick up on that, and they go out there, and they want to play just as hard as I do. Starks goes back to the defense. That damn year, slammed up. Being a leader, I have to show them that, you know, the only way we're going to win is we have to go out there and leave it out there on the court. Always an emotional player, John Starks has injected new life into the Warriors. The one thing you don't want to do is curb his emotion because it's, it's so infectious and so helpful to the team. When you play against him, he huffs and puffs up and down the court and, and you think he's arrogant and cocky. But when you play with him, you find out it's all about his intensity and his love for what he does. The Warriors have been riding John's emotions, not to mention his outside shooting. 
Starks has helped Golden State become one of the league's most improved teams. And he's set an example for the club's younger players. It's nice to be around a lot of young talent. Uh, we are a very exciting team. I think the league understands that this team is, has changed and uh, this is a team that's committed to winning. Starks, corner, Marshall, jumper, air ball, rebound, Cummings inside in traffic, tipped in, and the fans rise to their feet at the arena in Oakland. This is not the Warriors from a year ago. Nine. All right, now it's time for the top ten plays of the week in our courtside countdown. Coming in at number ten, it's the L.A. Lakers' Kobe Bryant. Bryant spins by Kobe. He absolutely owns that baseline. What a spectacular play. In at number nine, it's rookie Vince Carter of the Toronto Raptors. Vince oh. Carter over top of the line. Stop that one, big fella. Coming into number eight, it's Cleveland Cavaliers guard Derek Anderson. Derek Anderson, oh. nice move to the basket by Derek Anderson. And Derek wastes no time to deliver the basket. Up and over Haywood Workman. Wow. Into number seven, here's Calvin Cato of the Portland Trailblazer. Oh. 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 Calvin Cato! Jumping out of the ceiling. Six. It's the Lakers, Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant on the fast break. Shaq giving the ball. Shaq gives the ball over to Kobe. Back to Shaq. Great teamwork. That's one of the best plays those two have ever had as a combo. At number five, once again, it's Toronto's Vince Carter. Round the line. Vince Carter, the reverse jam on the alley-oop. A 10 by all judges. At four, it's Washington Wizards point guard Rod Strickland. Strickland into the paint. Oh, he's loud and he scores! Oh. Is he better than anybody in the NBA at that move? Incredible, incredible play. At three, the Kings' Jason Williams to Torek Abdul Wahed. Oh, oh what a back! Gosh. Out of backcourt! He throws it on a dime to Tariq for the two-hand jam. Coming in at number two, it's this pass from the Lakers' Kobe Bryant to Shaquille O'Neal. What a play. Oh. Sensational. Oh. Spinning around his head, and Shaq finishes it off. And for the number one play of the week, who else? For a third time, it's Vince Carter. Takes him to the baseline, reverses it. Oh, my goodness. And Carter heating up. It's Carter time here in Toronto. That was a big-time move by Vince Carter. That's all for this week's show. I'm Jim Fagan for NBA Action. See you next week.